Well, good evening. Welcome to the 6 p.m. press conference here on the CZU Lightning Complex. My name is Jonathan Cox, Deputy Chief for CAL FIRE San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit and Line Officer on the incident. As always, if you could just keep your cell phones muted, uh, take any conversations outside of the press conference area, uh, and wear masks at all times. We will have a uh, moment at the end of this press conference to ask individual questions of the speakers who are up here. Uh, as always, just a quick update on the incident. As of 6 p.m. this evening, uh, the CZU Lightning Complex is 84,338 acres. Containment went up to 33%. There are still 9,374 structures that are threatened by the fire. And unfortunately, we can confirm that 1,094 structures have been destroyed. Of that 1,094 structures, 20 of those are in San Mateo County, which includes six single family residents. In Santa Cruz County, 1,074 structures have been destroyed. Of those, 720 of them are single-family residents. Uh, over 40,000 people remain evacuated, and there are over 2,100 firefighting personnel now here on the lines. On an unrelated note today, we had a structure fire uh, and vegetation fire in the 10,000 block of West Drive in Lompico. That was an unrelated fire that uh, completely destroyed one structure and about a quarter acre of vegetation. With that, with an update on the operations here on the incident, Operations Section Chief Mark Brunton from CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3. Good evening. So another uh, really good uh, day with uh, our fire suppression efforts. Um, today, uh, a lot of the activity up in the north zone uh, in, in Branch 1. Uh, as I've been saying over the past few days, the fire has been progressing down towards our, our, our uh, lines. And uh, today we ended up doing a, a burning operation uh, that uh, to try to expedite that. Uh, it's been kind of a slow process. Uh, so we wanted to kind of get that cleaned up so we can uh, reduce uh, that, that risk uh, to, uh, to the fire lines and that threat to the fire lines. So uh, a lot more active burning there today, uh, especially before we start getting into that warmer and drier weather and, and change in our wind uh, pattern. So we wanted to, uh, to institute that uh, tactic so that we could uh, mitigate that that uh, risk. Uh, moving down the coast, still a lot of heavy mop up along the Highway 1 corridor, and that's going to continue to be that way uh, for the coming uh, days. Um, Davenport, uh, with some of the repopulation and so forth, we had a, a good burnout operation uh, yesterday uh, in San Vicente Canyon that really sealed uh, up uh, that part of the fire and uh, rendered it safe. So uh, that's looking really good down there, just again, a lot of mop up uh, in that area. South end of the fire is looking very good, uh, holding very well, and uh, continue to mop up. Moving up the Highway 9 corridor uh, around the uh, Camilla Felton is looking really good. Again, repopula repopulation uh, going on in those areas. And then moving up the Highway 9 corridor, continuing to establish those control lines up along Highway 9. Uh, that's going to render that si more safe. Um, again, a lot of uh, difficult terrain, the steep uh, terrain, the fuels, the heavy fuels. Uh, we've had a couple uh, areas that, again, had the slopovers due to the, the burning in that duff and, and through the root systems that we experienced uh, throughout the days and will experience moving forward uh, up in that branch one area where they did the burn operation. They had about a 10 acre, able to control that and incorporate it within our burn operation. And then down uh, in uh, just uh, above Boulder Creek, a very small one uh, that we were able to pick up. Uh, we have active patrols of our personnel in there as well as the continuing line construction. So they, uh, they made good, uh, good work with that. Uh, again, Bonnie Doom, um, a lot of hard work in there and continued uh, work uh, still ongoing. And it's gonna be an ongoing uh, challenge for us uh, in, that, in that area. As we get more resources, we're plugging them right in and they're going to work and, and mitigating as they go. Our air program, again, the weather didn't really cooperate as much, uh, so we couldn't really time out our aircraft, uh, but we did have a significant amount of uh, flight time when we, when we could get them up. A lot of water dropping missions. Uh, a lot of that was to support the burnout operation in the north part of the fire in the north zone, but some of the others also uh, uh, in various parts of the fire, uh, targets of opportunity and so forth. With the weather uh, coming up about mid to later week, we're starting to see as that pushes off and off, about Wednesday, Thursday, we're looking at uh, drier weather, um, hotter weather, and uh, a change of our wind pattern to a northerly pattern. So it gives us a few more days to continue uh, strengthen our lines, uh, put in our control efforts, and mitigate any potential for uh, any more spread of the fire or any sort of uh, uh, slop over of our lines.
Speaking next from the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office is Chief Deputy Chris Clark. Good evening. Uh, another good day today. We, uh, we welcome back the folks uh, in Felton and in Davenport. I know they were anxious to get back home. And, uh, and so we were, we were happy to, uh, to assist in making that happen. Uh, and as I've said before, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a day-by-day -day process, right, in getting people back home. Uh, but I just want to also preface that there's a lot of the county that still, that still has a lot of, it's still very heavily damaged. And, uh, and that's really uh, the Boulder Creek uh, and Bonnie Dune area. So I want you to know that progress is, is it's, a, it's going on, it's a daily, um, uh, daily effort in making sure those roads are safe, that utilities are there. So for the folks that live in Bonnie Dune and really the heavily affected fire areas, while, while these folks are going home, I want you to know that uh, and we want you to know that, uh, that, that things are taking place in those areas and, and, they're, and they're moving as fast as possible because we want to get you home. And so uh, I just want to let you know that there's a lot of people working very dil diligently to make that happen. Uh, in other uh, positive news, there are no arrests or, cit or citations uh, today. We also had no burglaries. And so I think that's, that's also something to note uh, for people that are at home. Uh, is that so far we are at, not necessarily at home, but people that are displaced uh, from this fire is knowing that um, is that so far you know having our police presence in the area uh, we haven't seen any burglaries uh, yet and I hope that continues and so that's something we, we obviously are in the area looking around patrolling and uh, trying to make sure that uh, that your property is safe and so with that 71 people today is the uh, is the number of staff we had uh, driving around uh, ensuring security of the evacuated areas 40 of our personnel uh, nine from in county 22 mutual aid uh, from over the hill tonight uh, we're going to have 45 deputies and officers that will be patrolling, 21 from us, 8 from in the county, and 16 mutual aid. So again, just we couldn't do this without, without our other uh, partners here in the county and over the hill, and we, and we definitely thank them for their assistance uh, in this. In terms of calls for service, we've had, we responded to four suspicious people and one welfare check. We still have just the one missing person. Uh, and again, as I mentioned uh, last night, that that person was reported missing uh they haven't seen the, the person hasn't been seen since before the fire started but was recently reported missing so our detectives are, are telling us that they don't believe necessarily this person's gonna be a fire victim but nonetheless we want to make sure we find them uh on another topic so uh, there was an incident a couple days ago with regards to uh some pipe bombs that were located in the boulder creek area near the golf course in the 100 block of lake uh lake drive and so um Yesterday, our, uh, late yesterday afternoon, uh, our detectives arrested 34-year-old Andrew Pace, who's a Boulder Creek resident for that, and so he uh, uh, faces charges of manufacturing explosive device, and so uh, he'll be arraigned and, and obviously go through the court process with that. Uh, something else that came up today, and it, in, and it came up yesterday a little bit too, and I just want to kind of reiterate this. So, Route, when you're, when you're coming back home, and again, we want you to get back home in the most efficient manner possible because you know like we've said it's, it's it, I, you know we can't imagine how frustrating this is for people that have been displaced and we want to get you home as quickly and as efficiently as possible and so part of that is just planning your route and really knowing where those uh, those CHP hard closures are and so I just want to reiterate CHP's uh, C CHP Santa Cruz's Facebook page uh, they have all of the hard road closures I hear Cal Fire's working with uh, with ways to populate those road closures within ways um, I have heard that uh, they do, they are somewhat popping up in Google Maps and Apple Maps, but I, I checked earlier and it didn't seem as consistent. So I think if you're going to plan your route back home, if, if, I, if that was me, I would be looking at CHP Santa Cruz's Facebook page and then taking a look at where those hard closures are and, and, then, and then planning my route from there. And then in, in terms of traffic, lastly, uh, just understand too that if you, you know, coming back to Felton, coming back to Davenport, uh, you're going to see still a lot of emergency vehicles. And so there's still a lot of traffic that's going to be in, in and around that area. So just keep that in mind. There, this fire is still not 100% contained, as you heard, 33%, which is great. But there's still a lot of work to do. And, and as I said, especially in those areas that were heavily impacted by fire. And so uh, just please, please be mindful of those emergency vehicles. And then um, lastly, uh, just also in the conjunction of that, is in terms of the fire, just paying attention to CAL FIRE's uh, website and, and, the, and making sure that you understand kind of what's going on with the fire because any, you know, things could change, but, uh, but keeping apprised of, of that and what the fire's doing uh, will only keep you better informed and safer. Thank you. 
Next from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office is Detective Blankswood. Good evening. For San Mateo County, we have deputies driving around with CAL FIRE to do damage and inspection evaluations. They're going to be identifying the damaged properties. As you, as you heard from um, Chief Cox today, we did jump from 11 to 20, and that's just due to these teams going out there actually in the field and doing these assessments. So we will continue to work with Public Works uh, to identify any roads or infrastructure that need repairing. Um, and also any trees that are unstable in the area of San Mateo County. County Parks closed the gate at Were Road and Old Hole Road, so be cautious of that. Additionally, Portola State Park is also closed. We're going to continue to assess areas outside the burn zones to determine whether or not people who were evacuated from these areas can soon return. That's gonna be ongoing for the next week or so, so your patience is definitely appreciated. We continue to do safety and security checks. Over the past 24 hours, we've had 44 personnel going around doing these safety and security checks. 10 of them were volunteers, 14 were deputies, 10 were CHP Redwood City officers, and eight were support staff. So thank you to Redwood City CHP for assisting us with that. Again, we're still asking people not to visit the coast this weekend. As you heard from Chief Brunton, we are expecting drier weather later this week, so things could rapidly change on the coast side, and we want to leave these roadways open for people who actually live and work there for everyone's safety. Thank you very much. That's all we have. Speaking next from the Cal Fire San Mateo Santa Cruz unit is Unit Chief Ian Larkin. Good evening. Uh, as you heard today, uh, we're uh, making some more success. 33% uh, uh, contained. Uh, crews are out there working uh, very, very hard um, to uh, make progress on the fire um, as we uh, move through this process of uh, trying to get the fire contained. Um, the collaboration and cooperation that's going on with all the uh, resources and the agencies uh, on this fire is just uh, insurmountable. It's just a, it's a, a feat that I, I'm proud to be a part of. Um, I've never seen anything like this in my career of having this uh, much cooperation um, with, with really li little issues uh, that have come up. So um, we, we continue to work through that. Um, the, uh, obviously the structure loss, our uh, damage inspection teams are out there working uh, diligently. Uh, there are still certain areas of the fire that are too dangerous for them to make access um, as we continue to move forward, uh, making that more safe for their um, inspection. Um, we'll get those, uh, finish up that report um, for that. And we're approximately 79% of that uh, effort is, um, is completed. So we'll continue with that uh, as we move forward. Um, one thing uh, we mentioned, we started repopulating uh, uh, more areas of, uh, of the county uh, with Felton being repopulated. Um, there's uh, more cars gonna be in the general area where we have fire apparatus and uh, law enforcement working uh, diligently out there to protect the citizens. So. Uh, please be cautious, uh, use uh, good judgment um, when you're driving on the roadways and pay attention uh, for those large vehicles that are going to be out there. Um, it could be a dangerous situation for yourself if you're not. Uh, so uh, please uh, be patient with us as we work through uh, uh, the final phases of this to, to get everybody back home um, and uh, start that recovery process uh, even more so than we are now. So thank you. Our final speaker this evening is from the Santa Cruz County EOC, uh, and it really is important as we transition from the mitigation phase of this fire to the recovery phase uh, to really start to highlight the work that's going on at the Emergency Operations Center, specific to how people can recover from this emergency. Uh, so I'm uh, happy to welcome from the EOC here in Santa Cruz County, uh, EOC PIO Jason Hoppen. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today we are very pleased to open our Recovery Resource Center. Uh, it is a multi-jurisdiction, multi-agency, one-stop center for people who have been impacted by the fire so that they can begin the recovery process. It will be open 11 to 7 daily. It is located at the Kaiser Permanente Arena in downtown Santa Cruz at uh, 140 Front Street. That's the Santa Cruz Warriors Stadium, so we're very thankful to them for offering that venue to us. Uh, and I just want to give you a partial list of some of the agencies that are there so far. We have FEMA, Cal OES, uh, Contractor State License Board, Department of Insurance, 
Second Harvest Food Bank, uh, in case you need to sign up for a CalFresh or other benefits. Assessor's Office is there. Obviously, a lot of homes have been uh, damaged uh, or destroyed, uh, so there's going to be a change in your tax situation. Human Services, Public Works, Planning, Environmental Health, which is very important for the debris removal process. The Resource Conservation District is there to give you advice on uh, the property management after a fire. Uh, American Red Cross is there, Employment Development Department, DMV, Vital Records, um, all that stuff is there. If you need any services, come down. There's a bunch of tables set up. You can move from one table to the next and hopefully knock off a lot of your needs. I also want to point out that we have set up a lot of these services online. So if you go to santacruzcounty.us, look for the tab. There's a fire recovery tab. Click on that and you'll find a link to the virtual um, recovery center. So a lot of these services are available online and uh, you can access those there as well. Um, I also want to point out that we have set up a hotline. We have several hundred residents still in a program that is offered by FEMA and managed by the State Department of General Services. They're staying in hotels, they're evacuees. The hotline number is 831-454-2181. If you're trying to get into the program, we're asking you to go to a shelter and fill out a form. Uh, our shelters are also available on our website. Uh, but if you have been, if you are staying in a hotel and you're in a repopulated area, you have 24 hours to check out. If you have not been repopulated, if you're still evacuated, you can stay in your hotel, but they work on seven day reservation cycles. So if you're nearing the end of your cycle, we ask you to re-up and call that number and get some information on how to go ahead and do that. Uh, lastly, I want to um, just note that uh, we're starting to step down our donations um, process a little bit starting Monday. We are still taking donations, but we'll be uh, doing it at reduced hours from 10 to 4. You can still bring by uh, water, uh, sleeping, uh, new clothes, new blankets, things like that, non-perishable food. Uh, one uh, drop-off location is our warehouse at 1082 Emmeline Street in Santa Cruz. And there's another one at 114 Walker in Watsonville. Um, I believe they're also uh, unofficially helping people who arrive at those warehouses with uh, goods if they need them. But if you need to pick up something, if you've been impacted by the fire, just show up at one of our shelter sites and uh, you can access uh, some of those donations at those places too. Thank you. All right, with that, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, so the question was related to, is there a, a set time frame for returning to the areas that are still evacuated? And, and we don't want to give anybody false hopes or false promises. And what we can say right now is it's day by day, the evaluation of all of these zones. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, the, the intricacies of what is going on up there at the moment between uh, utilities, roads, power lines, trees, um, uh, it, it would be really inappropriate for us to speculate right now on what that might be so the best answer we can give people is it's day by day the evaluation based on all those criteria and safety um, and just to stay tuned for for when that information comes out Randy Gordon uh, KBCZ Boulder Creek Community Radio uh, uh, can you give us any information about the mail and what people can do about their what, uh, can, what they should be and can be doing about getting their mail Sure, I think, it, uh, and Jason, I don't want to put you on the spot with this one, but um, if we don't have the answer, we can definitely follow up with that as far as how people can get their mail and, and where they can get it redirected to. We'll follow up with you on that. I believe if you live in the valley, uh, they're asking you to go to Watsonville to pick up your mail. Um, they were asking people in Scotts Valley, which has been repopulated, to go to Santa Cruz, so I don't know if that's really relevant anymore. My understanding is they're holding packages, however, so people should be prepared for that. You're just going to get your letters pick them up at Watsonville Post Office. Jason, do you want to come up here and just give that to sure. the camera? My understanding is that the post office is holding mail for people that live in the San Lorenzo Valley at the Watsonville Post Office. Uh, so you can go there, um, give yourself a little time. I understand there's lines, um, but they're holding uh, mail at this point. I don't think they're giving out parcels last I heard. Um, and I have no information from the post office on when that's going to start or how that's going to be managed. But if you are looking for your mail and you live in the San Lorenzo Valley, please go to the Watsonville Post Office. And, um, and if individuals don't want to pick up their mail, will their mail automatically be delivered to them once they're repopulated? 
I, I do not know. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. It's a post office issue. I'll try to find out. All right, so just to reiterate, I think it's really important what Jason's brought uh, up tonight is just how vital that recovery website is and the resources they have in the county. Uh, as we continue to, to reinforce and build the lines out on the fire, uh, the focus really is now transitioning to what recovery looks like and what the community needs for as far as resources. So with that, everyone up here is available for one-on-one -on -one questions. Uh, this concludes the 6 p.m. press conference. Thanks for joining us.